Hello everybody, welcome to our weekly webinar. My name is Merlin Rothfeld. Today we're going to talk about the limitations of free trading platforms. For many of us out there, we're active traders, we're looking to make gains, whether those are long-term or short-term gains in the market. And of course, one of the biggest costs that we have is commissions. So it's rather convenient that we have companies out there now that have popped up and said, free trading. And I wanted to do this webinar to kind of make people understand what the cost of free is. So that will be our topic for today. Here is our disclaimer. So we've got a little screen up here for you guys to read through very quickly. I was going to do like the Micro Machines guy and read through all this for you, but I'll just let you peruse it at your leisure. So let's go and start with free. What is free? If I was to tell you that I was going to give you a free car, I'm sure all kinds of visions pop up in your head of what kind of car am I going to get? Is it a Bentley? Am I getting a new GTR? Am I going to get myself a, a Ford Pinto? We, we just don't know. You might have visions of this guy, nice, beautiful Ford Mustang, right? Great little muscle car. Sure, I'd love to. If this is a free car, I would be more than happy to take it. But what if I gave you this monstrosity, this hideous looking thing that you're probably too embarrassed to drive around? Now, that said, this car probably is worth a ton of money because it's so rare, but it looks absolutely awful. The designer should be beaten, but we won't go into the design aspects of it. But if this was the free car that you received, you might feel slighted. Like, what, really? That's what I'm getting? What if I gave you this car? This car, I just dropped it off in your front yard, right? Now it's going to cost you more money than it's worth. This is just a waste. You would never have accepted this if this was the free car that you knew about. So the point is we want to understand what exactly is free. Uh, and of course, we're doing this live right now. So for those of you who feel like you would like to join the conversation, feel free to type in in our chat window there. I'll be responding to it as it progresses. So uh, I'll be monitoring your, your discussions, your comments, and so send them on in. Here is a screenshot that we took from one of the leading free trading sites out there, and they've gotten a ton of press for this. And I want to read through just the, the basics here. It says, invest for free. We believe that the financial system should help the rest of us, not just the wealthy. We've cut the, cut the fat that makes other brokerages costly, like manual accounting management and hundreds of storefront locations, so that we can offer zero commission trading. Of course, they've also cut a ton of other stuff, which I will walk through here today. But um, is free really worth it? All right, well, let's continue on here and see. What should we expect from these trading platforms, whether they are free or costly? There should be some commonality here. Number one, we're going to be looking for is functionality. What I mean by functionality is what does the charting package look like? Do I get level two? What kind of technical indicators can I put in my charts? Is there account management? Can I go back and click a button and see all of my trade history and then do analysis on it to see when I trade the best, when I trade the worst? Selection. What markets can I access? Am I stuck to just one market? Or do I have multiple targets that I can go and trade off of? Accessibility. How easy is it to access it? Do I have to download software? Do I have a web application? Can I use my mobile device? Can I use my watch? That type of stuff. And then ultimately it boils down to what is the true cost that is costing you? So that said, let's start off with the first piece of functionality that's probably my favorite and been the most uh, useful for me in my career as a trader, which is charting. Now, my charts don't quite look like this, but here we have an example of the S&P 500 with a whole bunch of different things on it. I believe from the looks of this, looks like we've got Bollinger Bands, we've got a moving average uh, exponential ribbon, we've got relative strength indicator at the bottom. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And to be honest, most of you probably aren't going to use all this functionality, but for many traders, it does help. And one of the things we like to look at at Online Trade Academy is really this concept of odds enhancers. Now, in our content and core strategy, we run through a list of odds enhancers that relate to exactly what price looks like on a price chart. Now, we can add other things, like some of these indicators here, to help us get better odds of a trade working in our favor. But the point is, we need to have a platform that allows us to find those specific resources and indicators. So here are some screenshots from Robinhood. And yes, I did open a Robinhood account just so I could be well-versed in the mechanics of their platform. Here are a couple screenshots. And Notice the charts are extremely basic. So when they say that there's no bells and whistles, I want to just make it clear, there's not a bell and there's not even a whistle. This is just a basic chart. Not only that, you notice that our time frames are limited here. You have a, a one day on the left-hand side, one week, one month. You have a three month, a year, a five year. And here is the only drawing tool that they allow you to use. I'm showing it for you for the first time. Check that bad boy out. See that vertical line right here? Yeah, that's the only technical indicator that they allow you to use is a vertical line to tell you what price traded at, or actually what price closed at on that day. So right away, 
you have to understand that free in the sense of this platform means that you don't get to see the range of what happened in that security over the course of a session. You don't get to see any sort of uh, bar charts or candlestick charts. You don't get moving averages. You don't get any sort of technical indicators. So right away, I would be absolutely handicapped as someone who trades for a living because the, the decisions that I make on how to buy and sell are based off of charts. And one area that Robinhood falls very, very short, extremely short, is charts. If it was a question of shortness, this would be the Hervé Villachez of the trading community. Very short. The plane, the plane. For those who don't know who Hervé Villachez is. All right, let's go and look at a comparison here. So here is a side by side of Robinhood's charting versus uh, this is TradeStation here, but could be any other trading platform. Take a peek at what we've got. We've got a chart that looks pretty much the same. It's the same basic chart. It's called a line on close. So all they're doing is quoting you the closing price for each day in this sequence, right? Now we'll go one step further here and say, well, yeah, I have the same thing on both platforms, no big deal. But what if I wanted to uh, look at candlesticks, which for me are a great way to see the psychology of buyers and sellers for each individual candle. And while you look at this Robinhood one on the left, you say, well, I can see the big moves. You can't really see what happened in each day. You just see the end of the day. I like to see the battle that formed, and that tells me a story which leads the odds in my favor. So already I have an advantage there. But what if I wanted to draw in some supply or demand? Right here's a great demand zone that was on Tesla where it just rocketed out of. Well, you wouldn't have been able to draw that on the other chart because it never went down there. What we're looking at is this point right here. Do you guys see it where the cursor is? The tail, it never went down there. So you would never have been able to buy here because you didn't know it went there because it doesn't show you intraday trades. It just shows you the closing price. Well, on the right-hand side, we can see that during this day, it did, in fact, come all the way down, hit that level, which was a buy point for anybody using supply and demand methodology, and then it ripped out for a phenomenal move. This is one of the deficiencies. What if I want to add on volume? Right? For me personally, I am a fan of volume. Volume is like the speaker dial on your home stereo. The louder it gets, the more emotion is in it, the more things start to rumble. And if I can correlate that with price action, the full price action, not just the line on close, it gives me a much clearer indication as to the fear, the greed, the emotions, and the overall panic that might be present in that specific security at any moment in time. So right away, not having volume for me is a handicap and you don't have volume on your free trading platforms. But wait, there's more. Again, we talked about some of the indicators. Well, what if I wanted to add things on like moving averages? So here we see a bunch of moving averages being put on this chart. And while I'm not a big fan of moving averages, it's just an example of the flexibility of some of these trading platforms. I know some of you that are watching this right now, you do use stochastics and Bollinger Bands and RSI and MACD and CCI, ADX, things that might help you um, support that trade decision, whether you're going long or short. So those are big factors for me. Next step we're going to look at here is going into selection. Really the markets that are available. So I'm going to walk through some numbers and again these things change very very quickly so I ballpark them. We have on the New York Stock Exchange roughly 2,800 different securities. We go to the NASDAQ, you've got roughly 3,300 securities. And the OTC market, the over-the-counter markets, you've got over 10,000 securities for a grand total of right around 16,000 different securities if you just traded stocks and ETFs. That, that's a pretty big selection out there. So what do you think that Robinhood gives you free trading allows you to trade there? What do they give you? 5,000. Now, let me take a step back and say this isn't necessarily a bad Thing, okay, I'm just pointing out some deficiencies. I'm not here to slam Robinhood. I'm not here to, to make these other platforms look that much better. I just want you to know what you're getting into. So I actually think what Robinhood is doing is actually a good thing. Here's why. Part of the problem that traders have is they're looking at this vast universe of equities. I'm sticking with stocks here just as an example, trying to find trading opportunities. And while I can go through my trading platform, which is a full service, much more powerful than, than Robinhood. I can run scans, filters, and weed through the, the, all the minutiae to find out just the ones that I want. I'll get rid of all that fluff of stocks. And a lot of those uh, 11,000 that Robinhood has eliminated, those are penny stocks, junk stocks, things with no volume that you shouldn't be trading anyway. So I think it's actually a pretty decent thing. However, I don't want to be told what I can and cannot trade. If I find one of those 16,000 stocks that I think, man, this is just a garbage stock, but I know something about it, or it's got great potential, or I feel this, this sector might boom, 
I want to be able to buy that and not be told, sorry, that's not part of our free trading application. So I, I like it and I dislike it. I don't want to be told that I'm limited, but I also like it for newbies out there. It kind of weeds out some of the risky stuff that you probably shouldn't be trading anyway. Okay, so what are some of the other things that you cannot trade? <clears throat> this puts a big handicap on you. So all OTC stocks gone, so you can't trade over-the-counter equities. Preferred stocks, tracking stocks, mutual funds you cannot trade, bonds, fixed income trading, so that type of stuff you can't do. You also don't have access to foreign exchanges. Now, for the vast majority, you're probably not going to be trading foreign exchanges or preferred stocks or uh, maybe even OTC stocks. So this probably isn't going to be that big of an issue for you. However, if you are a more experienced trader and this is something that you would like to be doing, you understand that right away this would not be a trading platform for you. You don't want to have a free trading platform if you're looking to trade uh, the European markets or go for specific OTC stocks or even buy bonds. So let's go into order entry, right? Selection obviously is very limited when we look at what goes on at Robinhood. Other platforms are limited and at the end I'll actually give you a little bit of a comparison here to show you what are some of the pros and cons of each one and kind of how they stack up. What I want to do is let's talk about order entry because here is where I think the big problem lies and this is not disclosed, it is not public, um, you know, in the public eye and it should be. So here's an example of, it's a screenshot of a buy for Tesla and I know that might be hard to read. So basically this is a screenshot that says shares of Tesla and it was market price at 304.70, so $304.70. So if you wanted to buy right now at this exact moment, what price would you be filled at? They're quoting you 304.70, so you're thinking, I would be filled at 304.70, right? That's what it says on the screen, that should happen. Well, yeah, not really, right? There's, there's the, the highlight of it, not really. Let me show you, at the exact same time I took this screenshot on my phone, I took another one on my computer of what is called level two. Level two represents all the buyers and sellers in the marketplace. So while you see the screenshot here is saying, here's what you can buy it at, take a peek at this. Here is a screenshot of that level two for Tesla at the same moment in time. Now, for many of you, this might look like a kind of a Christmas gift or something, all these colors going on. So I'm gonna explain it real quick, just so you have an idea of how this all works and what it means to you. So on the left-hand side of this colored bands, those are all willing buyers. What do we mean by willing buyers? Essentially, every name that you see there, and it says, you got BATS, EDGEX, uh, EDGEX. These are a lot of electronic communication networks. These are ECNs, which allow us to display orders. It could be me, it could be an institution, doesn't matter yet. Just remember, this is a specific order or group of orders, and they are all willing to buy, meaning they're literally sitting there with their hands out saying, I'll buy X amount of shares at this price. So let's say, for example, uh, this top one here, it says BATS with the pound sign. At $304.57, there is one order to buy 100 shares, right? You can see it right there. At the same price on Edge X, which is another electronic network, there are three orders, because you see three right here, to buy 300 shares at that same price. So we can start to get a sense as to how those buyers and sellers are lining up. On the other side here, we see willing sellers. So these are all people that are literally waving their shares in the sky saying, hey, I'm willing to sell you 100 shares at $304.79 right now as of this second, or when I took the screenshot, that was the best price on earth that you could buy it at. That's the lowest price that you could buy it at. Well, that, doesn't that seem kind of weird? Wasn't the previous slide we looked at uh, on Robinhood saying you could buy it at $304.70? Yes, that's what they posted because it wasn't reflecting the real market. You are going to suffer slippage. So at best, you are going to pay nine cents more per share. And I know for a lot of you that doesn't really make a difference. Wait till the end, I'll show you how this does uh, stack up and why that nine cents could be a huge difference for you. Now, the other thing I want you guys to understand is what is called the spread. Now, if you want to be successful in business, your goal is to buy things at a wholesale price, sell it at a retail price, and keep that markup. The cheaper I can buy it, the better for me, the higher I can sell it, the more profit margin, right? So it's just simple business math. Well, what's great about this level two is it allows us to see right away what's the wholesale buying price and what's the retail selling price. So if we look at this one again, I'm gonna highlight in red here a little box that shows you those two values. And you can see the wholesale buying price. So you could, if you had the right tools and access, you could potentially buy this at 304.57 and sell it at 304.79. That is called the spread. 
That spread is historically what the market makers or institutions are taking from retail investors. That's what they're making to take the other side of your trade. So what is the spread on this specific situation? Well, we have 304.79 minus 304.57 equals 22 cents. So you're giving away 22 cents on this trade if you were to buy this on a non-directed platform. Robinhood is a non-directed platform, meaning you don't choose where your orders are going. When you hit that buy button, they are choosing it, and therein lies one of the big problems associated with their platform. So let's go one step further and show you what you can see on Robinhood here is here's their order entry screen, right? So I clicked on market buy and you're like, well, I want to change it to a limit order. Great. You have market orders, you have limit orders, stop losses, which I'm actually very happy they have on their platform. Some platforms don't even have stop losses and you should never use those. And you also have stop limits. Now, we're not going to go into the mechanics of how stop limits work and stop losses, but to say that they give you order functionality, yes, they do. You get a nice selection here, markets, limits, stop losses, and stop limits. What they don't give you are what I would call professional orders or conditional orders, things like bracket orders. Why is this important? One of the things that we love to teach in our class at Online Trade Academy is this. Many of you have day jobs. You can't sit there and monitor your trades all the time. And there's three factors that make up a trade. That's your entry price, your stop loss, which defines how much you're willing to lose, and your price target, which defines how much you want to make. And we go through ratios and relationships here, so we understand going into everything that you trade, whether it's a stock, futures, commodity, even real estate, here's my entry, my stop loss, and my price, tar price target. What are those three variables? So with this free platform, you can only put in your entry price. You just, I had to like pause there. You just you say, I want to buy it here. Once you do that, then after you are filled, you have to go back in again, and then you have to put in a stop loss order. So you really have to go back and do things twice, and you can't put in a profit target here with this platform. With a bracket order, I can put all three of those in at the same time. So let's say, for example, I've got a stock right now. It's trading at uh, $30. I want to buy it when it hits 28. I don't want to sell it. If I do get entered, I want to sell it when it hits uh, 35. Okay? So buy at 30, stop loss at 28, target is 35. Great. I've got a $2 stop loss, $5 profit target. Not quite the ratio I'd go for, but you get the example. If I want to, I can put all those in on a professional trading platform, put all that in right away, go to whatever I have to do, go to work. If I don't get filled, I don't get filled. If it does hit $30 and fills me, okay, great. Now I have two orders, one that says stop me out or take a profit. Those are in the system. That is a professional grade trading platform that's called a bracket order. I think it's a critical piece for those that want to be professionals at this. You also have what's called an, an OCO, which means one cancels the other. This is kind of a conditional thing that is somewhat similar to a bracket order, but again, it is a multi-tiered order structure. And finally, you have an OSO, meaning if this happens, send this order, and it could be on another security. So uh, let's say if Microsoft drops to this price, I want to buy it, and then I want to also sell a share of IBM, or whatever the case may be. Those are called OSOs, and you can't do that as well. There's no conditional type of order functionality, which is rather limiting to me. So let's go to an example here real quick, going back to our non-directed orders. So let's say that you wanted to buy at that wholesale price, right? You're using a retail platform. I'm going to use uh, Robinhood here, and I'm sorry to pick on Robinhood. It's just the one that offers free trading. So let's pull back the curtain and show exactly what goes on. Here you have, uh, we're trading with Robinhood, and you say, all right, I want to buy it at that 304.57. That is the best wholesale price there. I want to buy that as opposed to paying that 304.79 and giving away 22 cents. So you're probably thinking, well, all I have to do is simply set a limit order, right? Just use a limit order. And I would come back to you and say, absolutely wrong. Big old red letter. Why? Here's why. A remember, a directed order, I can send whoever I want. And on that screen, those are all electronic networks. I can send my order through any of those if I have the ability to direct my own order flow. On Robinhood, you do not. Remember, they choose it. And who are they going to choose? They're going to choose the institutions that pay them. Aha. You had to question yourself, right? If they're offering for free trading on Robinhood, how are they making money? Well, number one, they're making money off of the interest on the money that's sitting in your account. So they're taking whatever unused balances you have and gener generating interest on that. They're also selling your orders. Now, for me, this is a big red flag. They are selling your orders to somebody else. <clears throat> now, 
I got a comment from a, a listener the other day. They said, well, look, I, I did my research here, and Charles Schwab, TradeStation, the, the two I'm going to use in examples here, they also sell their order flow. Yes, they do. That's absolutely true. However, on TradeStation, I can direct my own order flow, and it doesn't get sold to these institutions. It doesn't get sold to Instanet. And some of you might have been trading for a long time, and you go, well, isn't Instanet an electronic communication network? Can't I direct my own order flow there? No. In 2005, NASDAQ bought the ECN for Instanet. Now, Instanet is just a brokerage firm and is basically an order execution site. So is Virtue Financial, one of the better, uh, bigger high-frequency trading firms out there. G1 Execution Services, Citadel, one of the largest trading companies out there. They're using your order flow. Now, why is this an issue? Well, first, let me just show you the wording just so you guys know I'm not making it up. Apex is the clearing firm for Robinhood. And here you can see that they receive payments from Two Sigma Securities, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's not much. But think about this. If I was to buy your order, so let, let's just take a step back and think of a real-world example here and, and try to keep it um, simple. If you were to go and buy something at the store, and before you could buy it, I was standing at the store going, all right, who wants to buy a can of Coca-Cola? And I'm, I'm buying all of your orders to buy it. I'm, I'm taking those orders, and I see there's a ton of people to buy it. I'm going to jack my price up. Or I'm going to buy it in front of you, and I'm going to sell it right back to you. It's front-running of order flow. Yes, I know the SEC is supposed to be watching that, but really there's no way they're going to track the millions and millions of transactions that happen every single day. So your order flow is sold to somebody else. And one of the things you've learned if you've taken classes at Online Trading Academy is the markets function because of two things. They function because the institutions are taking advantage of retail traders. That is pretty much the number one reason why they function. They know retail investors are generally wrong. So here you have Robinhood, which is exclusively institutions are not using Robinhood to trade they are buying the retail order flow they know what the retail traders are thinking so they can actually trade against you and basically sell you what you want to buy out of their own inventory because they know that you're probably wrong or they could um, pass your order through to someone else and maybe even sell out for even more money market orders you're gonna get big slippage so selling your order flow to somebody else is a massive problem and again we want to make sure we know what's going on with our order flow so these free platforms, you're never able to direct it. It's going to where they choose, and they're going to send it to wherever they get the most money for it. And then whoever has that order to me, that's the problem. They now see what you want to do. They can trade against you. All right, let's go at the, the statement it's free. It's free, but here's what uh, happens in Robinhood. You can actually buy upgraded services. You want to get margin, buying power? Well, you, have to, you, know, you can get that too. You want to get extended hours trading? You can do that. Instant access to your money? Great, you can get that, but you're going to have to pay. So let's just run the simple math here on what the cost of free is. So I love it. Uh, let me just go back real quick. to I want you guys to read this slide. On the left-hand side, it says, up to 2x buying power. Increase your buying power without depositing a dime. No interest, no hidden fees. I think that that almost should be viewed as deception there in its wording. Why? Let's take a look at this one. While they're not charging you interest, they're charging you a flat fee. Okay, that is interest. You're borrowing money and you're paying for it. That, that's a fee interest. So look at the first one here. $1,000. So if you wanted to add an extra $1,000 buy power to your account. So let's say you have a $1,000 account at Robinhood. You wanted to add another $1,000. Great. It's $6 a month to have that. Okay, great. That's, that seems fine. Well, if you annualize that, it's a 7.2% interest annually. Right? So it's, it's not free. There's interest there. Uh, if you want $1,500, again, that's $9 a month. It's 7.2%. It actually drops a little bit if you go up to $2,000 margin here. That's 5% per year, which is not that bad. However, here's the big difference I want you guys to be aware of. I use margin on the trades that I make. Of course I do. I love margin. Margin's great, a very powerful tool if you know how to use it. But the difference is this. If you have their platform, and you've, uh, Robinhood's platform, and you use the gold, uh, Robinhood Gold, you are paying a monthly fee for that margin. I'm paying for margin only when I use it. So right now, uh, in my, one of my equity accounts, I have no positions open. I'm not paying anything for that margin. If I open a position, yeah, I'll pay margin for the money I used for the period of time that I used it. And it's going to be a lot less than these numbers here. So this is also a little bit deceptive here. If you guys decide to go to Robinhood Gold so you get margin, you're paying a monthly fee whether you use it or not. So if you are planning on being active, fine, it might be worthwhile. But if you're just going to be kind of a every now and again trader, you, you shouldn't go to Robinhood Gold because now you're giving away several dollars a month. And I know it's not a lot of money, but it all adds up over time. Compounding, my friends. All right, let's talk about after hours trading, extended hours trading. 
So here we see a price chart of really 24 hours, and this is that same stock Tesla. I'm not picking on Tesla, it was just one of the ones that they were, uh, one of the first ones I saw on Robinhood's platform. So here you have uh, 24 hours worth of trading that I have access to because I can do directed orders. My platform allows me to do extended hours trading for no additional fee also. But here is what you are limited to if you use the Robinhood platform. All those areas in red, you cannot trade. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. One of the things you have to understand is that in these after hour sessions, there's very limited volume. There's not a lot of action. So think it's actually rather dangerous out there. I don't recommend that traders trade in the extended hour session. But there may come a time when you say, you know what, I want to get out of something and it's you know, two hours after the market closed. Yes, you can use extended hours trading. So I think it's important to have it if you need it. Um, it's, like, it's like car insurance. You kind of want it there when, when you get in a crash. Well, if you're in a position or some bad news comes out, you can trade in those extended hour sessions when others probably would not. You have to pay extra for that on Robinhood as well. So let's look at a quick table here, and this is my opinion. This doesn't reflect Online Trading Academy or OT Academy's opinion about these things. This is just me as a trader who's been trading for 20 years. Um, when you look at functionality, Robinhood is as bare bones as it gets. There's really no functionality out there whatsoever. You want to buy it, great. If you want to sell it, great. But you're paying retail prices. Charles Schwab has much better functionality. TradeStation, I would say, and again, um, Charles Schwab, we could look at something like an E-Trade, an Ameritrade as well. Um, TradeStation is really kind of more of the people who want to do this as an active for business, for a living. Um, amazing functionality, almost to a fault. There's so much that that platform can do. If you're brand new to it, it it's probably going to confuse you. Selection, Robinhood is really a small pool that you can trade out of. Charles Schwab gets much bigger. TradeStation is actually uh, even bigger than that. Again, with TradeStation, um, depending on what market it is, you can trade pretty much anywhere around the world, but you would have to pay probably some exchange fees to access those different markets. Now, that may not be something that you guys want to do. You probably don't care about trading the Brazil markets. Well, some people might. You might be from Brazil and, and want to be active in those markets. You can with TradeStation and things like that. Accessibility. All right, I, I gave Robinhood three because their phone app is very simple to use, pretty clean and easy. Their website, which was recent, um, is okay. It's nothing special. It's basically like a giant web, web app for the phone. Um, but they don't have a downloaded platform, which generally would increase your functionality. And maybe that's something they're going to have later on. Um, you know, some people don't like to go through the web and go through web portals to be trading and investing and giving away secret information. Granted, who knows how secure your internet connection is anyway. Um, but Schwab and TradeStation have just about every way to access their platform. You can download platforms, you can go on the web, you can use your tablets, your phones, whatever. Um, so I gave those both fives. Directed orders. Okay, Robinhood, no. Right away, guaranteed, that's a no. Charles Schwab, I'm pretty sure that you cannot direct your own order flow. Maybe on their advanced, I think, uh, was it Street Smart Pro, I think you might be able to go through these ECNs. When you use something like TradeStation, I can now go through ECNs. I can direct my orders to Edge. I can direct my orders to um, uh, Bats Exchange, and therefore allow me to negotiate with the marketplace. So at the bottom here, I have their commissions. You have zero for Robinhood, which a lot of people, that's what their main determinant is. $4.99 for Charles Schwab, and for TradeStation, you're looking at 5 bucks. So let's take a step back here and say, who is this for, right? Who who would Robinhood or free trading platforms be for? I'm going to say it's for traders with small accounts. So for my friend Katie, we were talking about this one last night. This is for you. Uh, Katie has a $50 account at Robinhood. And she says, well, it's OK. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got a $50 or $100 account, you shouldn't open a Schwab account. You shouldn't open a TradeStation account. Why? Because the commissions will kill you. So let's look at some examples here just to give you an idea of, of how this works with regards to different size trading accounts. So here we have GoPro, GPro trading at $4.88. I took this picture yesterday, so it might not be $4.88 right now. Don't worry. Um, what I want to do first is I want to verify that number on the screen. $4.88. Is that what they're going to be selling it to me for? Let's see. I want to bring up level two. And lo and behold, you can see that on the ask side, that's the right-hand column, you see a lot of people here selling at $4.88. So, pretty confident that if I was to buy right now GPro on GoPro on um, uh, Robinhood, I'd be paying $4.88. Great. So let's look at the math. Let's say you had a $1,000 account. You decided to buy 200 shares of GoPro at $4.88. That's going to cost you $976. Now I have down here, it says potential savings, $4. And you might be asking, what does that mean, potential savings? Well, remember, with Robinhood, you're always going to be paying that retail price. In this example, you see 488. 
but I can, I have the potential and could possibly buy this at 487. I'm saving myself one penny. And some of you viewing this right now are shaking your head and going, come on man, one penny? Mind you, this is 200 pennies I'm saving, right? I'm buying 200 shares of GoPro, 200 pennies, that's $2 on my purchase, and I could save $2 on my sell. That's $4 right there. Now, round trip commissions would cost me 10 bucks. I'm just using trade stations, five in, five out. That would be a net loss of $6. So, in this example, this trader should absolutely use something like Robinhood. Sure, the commissions would kill you. But what if you had a bigger account? What if your account was 10,000 and you bought 2,000 shares of GoPro? All I did is add zeros onto this, guys. So you're, you're spending $9,760 to buy 2,000 shares of it. There's enough liquidity here so you could actually buy that amount. Your potential savings is $40. What do you mean potential savings? Well, remember, 2,000, 2000 pennies is 20 bucks. I save that going in and out, potentially, not guaranteed, but potentially. That's potential savings of $40. If you take away that $10 commission, five in and five out, that means I could make $30 more by using a full service platform that gives me all the charting functionality I need, all the order tracking, all the analysis tools, research, everything. So I'm getting all that and I'm making more money. Let's look at a different example. How about Tesla? All right. Um, Three shares of Tesla at $304.79. Now, I want to go back to our illustration here. Remember, we looked at this one earlier where it said you're buying Tesla at $304.70. You guys can see where the cursor is moving right now. $304.70. What price did you get it at? You're not getting it at $304.70. It's not going to happen. You're going to get it at $304.79. Remember, this company is selling your order flow to somebody out there that's going to sell it to you at the retail price, which is $304.79. So, what does that equate to? Three shares of Tesla would be $914.10. Potential savings because we have a 22 cent spread times three shares is 66 cents in, 66 cents out. That's $1.23 in potential savings that you could if you had a uh, directed orders. Take away your commissions, yeah, you'd be losing $8.77. So again, for a small account, Robinhood is the way to go. Definitely makes sense. But what if we got bigger? What if we just traded 30 shares of Tesla? I won't read through all the numbers here, but potential savings, you can make yourself $12.23 more by buying at the bid, selling at the ask. Therefore, you would actually make $2.23 more. So really not that big of a deal here. What if you were a big trader, and now you're looking at trading uh, 300 shares of Tesla? It's a $91,000 investment. Well, you could potentially save yourself, in this example, $112. So it does start to add up. That's why I say, who is it for? small account size. So that's number one. If you got a, a small amount, you got a, a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, great. Robinhood's good for you. But it's also good for new traders, people who just want to get some skin in the game. And I think if I was a parent, I would say, all right, here, here's for my son, here's uh, $200. Here's a trading account. I'll let you play with that one for a while and see how you like it. If it's something you're interested in, then let's talk about a real platform and get you into technical analysis and look at some of these bigger tools and how they can impact and change the way that you actually make money and make a living as a trader. You're not going to make a living using Robinhood. You're just making that, I mean, I guess you could, but if you're going to trade that much money so that you would be making a living in Robinhood, you make a much better living on a platform that gives you all the resources and tools that you need. So in summary here, I want to look at it like this. It's a race. And uh, the race is to get your accounts as big as possible. Grow your net worth. Use trading as a vehicle to make more money and grow and grow and grow. So if you're in a race, you want a nice car. And I think this is a McLaren P1. Pretty nice car. I'd be pretty happy driving that one around a track. I think I'd have a, a competitive chance of winning a race in that car. And that is you using a platform like, you know, TradeStation or Charles Schwab or, or more, some of the more advanced platforms out there. If you are using Robinhood, you're really in a Mini Cooper. You, you don't stand a chance when it comes to being competitive using all the tools and resources. Plus, I have all kinds of advantages in my vehicle that that one doesn't. Now, which one looks cooler? Well, granted, Mini Cooper is pretty darn cool. It's fun to take a putz around the track and take that track for a test drive, but you're not going to get the full enjoyment of trading and investing using a retail platform like Robinhood that is so limited in what it offers. Um, if any of you uh, think differently, feel free to type it on in there. I would uh, love to get some feedback on this one because I know some of you are probably using this platform. Uh, I won't because my accounts are a little bit bigger than that. But again, for those of you starting off, 
very small share size, excellent. Use it. Once you start getting comfortable with it, start looking at technical analysis and ways that you can use supply and demand methodology to increase your odds of being in a successful trade. As you saw earlier, when we looked at that price chart of Tesla, it didn't even give you the full picture on Robinhood, whereas a real platform that gives you candlesticks or bar charts, you can see what really happened out there. And that's where those trades are made, at those extreme levels, at demand levels, at supply. Now, if you would like to learn more about trading and investing, I would encourage you to go to otacademy.com. There's a lot of free videos out there, free resources that can help you increase your knowledge about what really goes on in the marketplace, how it really works. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about, you know what, I know enough, I really want to take classes on core strategy, I want to take classes on trading stocks or futures or commodities so that I can really accelerate my learning and become a professional trader, you can visit tradingacademy.com for more information. And again, when you're at the OT Academy website, if you have some feedback on these videos, we'd love to hear from it. You can also let us know about future videos you'd like to see. That will do it for today. Oh, we, um, Mark says, how about Thinkorswim? Same thing, it's right up there with the trade station. You've got directed orders out there, so it's one of the more professional platforms. You have access to all the tools out there. And to me, that's the key. Um, it's kind of like saying I'm a military guy going into war, and I'm not a military person, so thank you all that, that have. But if I'm in a military situation, I want to have access to all the tools to help me in any different market situation, whether I'm hand-to-hand -hand combat, I'm long distance, I want to have all the weapons available. Really, with Robinhood, you don't have all the weapons. You're really just kind of a one-directional trick pony here that has no commissions. That's the only advantage that you have, because you don't have the order directing, you don't have the tools, you don't have the resources, you don't have the functionality, etc. Um, which broker for futures do I use? I have several of them. I use TP Futures. I have an account at TradeStation. I actually even have an account over there at uh, E-Trade uh, e as well. So I use dip several different brokers out there. All right, great question. Thank you guys for those ones. All right, uh, I'm going to wrap it up for today. So thank you guys for joining us today. Again, if you want to know more, visit otacademy.com. There's a ton of different free videos out there, and we look forward to seeing you guys on our future webinars and sessions. Take care, everybody.